The Southwest has been named as the region with the highest number of political appointments, and the Southeast has been tagged the lowest since the re-election of President Muhammad Bukhari. And President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, and other principal officers of the Red Chamber gave a warm welcome to Oji Uzokalu, who was accused of embezzling money. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. We're glad you could join us for the program. Now, Ogun State in southwest Nigeria has the highest number of political appointments made by President Muhammad Buhari since his re-election in 2019, holding 17 out of a total of 190 appointments. On a zonal basis, the southwest geopolitical zone comprising Ogun, Oshun, Oyo, Lagos, Ondo, and Ekiti tops the list of 63 appointees. The southeast zone, which consists of Abia, Anambra, Eboni, Enugu, and Imo, has the lowest number of appointments at 15. The northeast, comprising Yobe, Bonu, Bochi, Taraba, Gombe, and Adamawa, produced 29 appointees in total. Joining us to discuss this is Fred Nzako. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Good evening. We are also joined by John Wesley. Do we have you, John? All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So let's start with you, Fred. In one of our news bulletins, I asked the guest, why does seeming silence from the presidency after the strong accusation from Abubakar Umar over lopsided appointment? Now we have a list. What is your initial reaction? My initial reaction is always my reaction, and that is to the fact and to the effect that um, the current government led by President Muhammad Buhari is not making any adequate efforts at uniting Nigeria through deliberate efforts of government. And when I say uniting Nigeria, we have a very fragile democracy, a very fragile political democracy that relies so much on the balance of, of, uh, of um, issues, that relies so much on the respect for federal character, that relies so much on respect for the rule of law, that relies so much on full integration of all nationalities and all sections of Nigeria towards bringing in everybody to the same table and the same room so that we'll continue to march on in one united entity called Nigeria. But the experience of, of uh, the current administration since 2015 has shown that um, the Southeast geopolitical zone has been left in the cold. Uh, but Fred, let me, let me interrupt so we can actually streamline this conversation. I'm asking you for your reaction to the list that was released uh, showing the zonal distribution of the appointment of President Buhari. Uh, there were accusations before now by Abubakar that, I mean, the, the appointment did not follow the federal character principle. Now we have a list. Even though the list is not a comprehensive one, it does not have the ambassadorial um, and other um, uh, ministries and parastatals, uh, permanent secretaries, and the like. So I'm asking you, based on the argument that his appointment is lopsided, he has given, the presidency has released a list. What is your reaction to that list? That's my question. The list, the list released by the presidency does not in any way take away the fact of um, the, uh, uh, Mr. Omar's um, acquisition of lopsidedness. The list has shown also that it is lopsided, even though the Southwest zone seems to be most benefited. But that list does not uh, represent the full appointment by Mr. President, because the 190 appointments we are talking about are in relation to the 
staff of the presidency working with either Mr. President or Mr. Vice President. The rest, which work outside the presidency, which um, uh, we expected that uh, the, the, the federal character principle must be obeyed in such appointment, there is still lopsidedness in that. Yes, Southwest benefited because of the impact of the presence of uh, the vice president. And Ogun State, from your intro, from your prologue, benefited the most by state um, um, ranking because of the presence of Mr. Vice President. So what it now means is Mr. Vice President has brought in a lot of appointments toward his own zone, followed by Mr. President for his own zone, and the rest of the zones are they, they, they only take, taking the crumbs. And I cannot okay. um, let's also my get... introduction without complaining about the, 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 the almost zero appointment that came on the way of the Southeast. Okay, um, let's uh, uh, also get John's perspective on this so as to drive the conversation. Uh, your reaction as well to the breakdown of appointment by this administration. Do we have John? Uh, well, okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Go yeah. ahead, sir. Well, uh, well I, I like to say that uh, you, you see, over time, one of the things that the president uh, uh, is fond of saying, the president will want to appoint people that he knows. The president will want to appoint people that he can trust. The president will want to do this and all of that. However, something is also very important to mention. Uh, at some point, it was more of a northern appointment. Okay, at this point, we had more of a... Hello, John. Okay, we'll try and get back to John um, um, as soon as we can reestablish contact. Let's go back to Fred. Um, you, were all, you were trying to explain a little further, but what's your assessment looking at the zonal distribution? Uh, we know that the Southeast is the list, um, uh, has the list appointment, um, and the Southwest has the chunk of the appointment. What's your assessment looking at all of this? Does it capture the um, uh, federal character that we talk about? Or is it an issue of um, competence, as many are alluding? Anybody who alludes, anybody who alludes that it is a, a matter of competence is not um, telling the truth. Because um, you cannot tell me that very competent people do not come from the Southeast. Um, recall that the unity schools, that uh, in the exams that uh, were for unity schools, for children that are going to federal government colleges, the Southeast is usually expected and given very high um, scores before they make it. In a situation where most of the Southeastern states are given 139 mark, cutoff mark, 140, 141. Most of the states in the south, in the northwest, are given as low as 10. So what it simply means is that if you look at the the the, the grading by NECO and by, by JAM and by WAEC, it tells you that you have very brilliant people from the southeast. So nobody will come now and say when it comes to appointment that uh, competent people are now lacking in the southeast. What is lacking is the will by the government to do good to all manner of people, irrespective of Mr. President's assertion that he is for everyone and he is for nobody. That expression by Mr. President, that he is for nobody and he is for everybody, has not found any life in the appointment to southeastern Nigeria. South-South is also sidelined. South-South is also marginalized in the scheme of affairs in the appointment by this government. The zones that are enjoying the Lagis are the Southwest, the Northwest, followed by the Northeast and the North Central. The Southwest and uh, the South-South and the Southeast are the least remembered in appointments. And that is not good because it, 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 it goes to emphatically underlie Mr. President's 
assertion that um, he will do good to those who voted for him and will not care much to those who did not vote for him. But then Mr. President must know that election is different from governance. After election, governance takes over. So Nigerians who voted for Mr. President expect that he should do who should be the father of all Nigeria? Uh, Fred, let me let me let me interject. Of of Nigeria. Let, let so me any appointment that skims out anybody. Fred, can not, you hear me? Any, yeah. I'm sorry, I have to interject because I, I, I don't want us to move too further uh, from this particular aspect, and that has to do with some clarification. Um, the Senate spokesperson, he, the, I'm going to quote him twice in the course of this conversation, but the Senate spokesperson was quoted in the Punch newspaper um, as saying, when you talk of the North, we have three zones, not Central, not East, not West. But when people want to be mischievous, when the appointment comes from the not central and they want to just make it look as if it's from the north, they will say this one is also from the north. But when it suits them, they will talk about the southeast and the southwest. So I want you to speak on that before we go ahead. That is why it is good that um, you brought out the analysis of the appointment zone by zone. We are no longer talking about the dichotomy of North and South. We are not talking about Southern Nigeria and Northern Nigeria. We are talking about the six geopolitical zones of Southeast, South, South, Southwest in the South, Northeast, Northwest, and North Central in the North. And the appointment, the 190 appointments of people that work in the presidency, which we are talking about as a reference point, shows that Southwest benefited the most, followed by Northwest and Northeast, North Central in that order. With Southeast and South-South getting very, very minimal appointments. And by the time you go into the nitty gritty of the scope of the appointment, you find out that even the little that was given to Southeast and South-South can be, can be said to be um, it not as consequential as those held by other zones, especially the Southwest and Northwest. I have tried to, rational, to understand the rationale behind that, that it possibly because Mr. Vice President is from Southwest and possibly because Mr. President is from Northwest. But that should not take away the fact that we are all in one Nigeria. And the doctrine and concept of one Nigeria will not be encouraged by such dichotomy and marginalization of a section of the people against the others. That is not good. And okay. going forward, by the time you look at other appointments, outside the ones that work in the villa, you will be shocked at the level of neglect and marginalization of the Southeast and the South South. All right, let we, I, I understand we have John, but this time he's joining us via telephone or due to network challenge. Uh, John, you're welcome back. I'll just put you on the spot quickly and bring you um, in with the spokesperson again of the Senate, um, Dr. Ajibola, who addressed journalists after plenary on Tuesday and described as beer parlor talk. He described as beer parlor talk. Okay. Claims that Buhari's appointment um, was lopsided based on the data that was released today. Would you agree? You see, there are, there are certain statements that should not be heard from certain individuals. It, it doesn't make any sense to me if a senator comes in front of the media to talk about uh, presidential appointment as uh, a parlor talk. You see, appointments are not just made. However, there is, there is something I must mention. Whenever appointments are to be made, particularly in these numbers that we have, if the president does not just sit down to begin to write names and say that these are the people that I just want. Yes, there are situations where we have the president, we go ahead to say that, okay, I want this person, I insist that I want this person. We have had situations like this happen during the appointment of the likes of Abatunde Radifashola. We have had this in other cases of Abaki Ari, who is late. 
In fact, we had the same case with the present SGF appointment. But you cannot have the same case with all the total numbers of people that have been appointed. There are inputs from various states before these people are appointed. So if someone comes before the media to say it's beer parlor uh, appointment or whatever, we should question the person too. What does he know? How come he's talking about it as beer parlor? So going back to the eastern part and some other part, one of the things that also affect this appointment that we must mention is the fact that when they are making appointment, the fact that some people feel that my name should be the name that should go to Abuja. So the the, the, the Hulabalu continues till maybe when the time the names are supposed to Abuja is over. And so eventually, somebody decides to veto, sends one or two names, and that's it. But we know that from the word go, the president has been the way he is. We know that, yes, his appointments have been one way or the other, lopsided and all of that. But it should not be taken away that the president does not sit down with a pen and paper and write all these names by himself. I'm sure even some of the people that the president appoints, there are some of them that the president do not even know them or must have not met before. So when we talk about some appointments, uh, uh, when it was, you know, more of the northern part, there was so much noise. Okay, it was more recently now the appointment favored more of the southwest, there is noise. If, so what, if eventually, one way or the other, by, you know, before the end of this tenure, if there were more appointments from the southeast and the south-south, the northern people too will come to say, ah, the president did not follow federal character. Then the southwest too will say the president did not follow federal character. We cannot continue like this. There, there is the something truth. you said that I'd like to pick on before we um, go ahead with all the questions. You said something about the president not knowing everybody that is on the list. Um, is that something that should be put out there, really? Because for him, remember uh, before now, he said he wants people in his team that he can trust. He wants people who has antecedents that he can you know, count on. If you now say that some of the names on that list are unknown to the president, doesn't that, you know, put pay to um, comments that there might be a cabal in the presidency that's controlling things? It's not even about cabal now. You can take whatever I tell you now, you can take it even before Donald Trump, that I said that not all the people on the list of the president are the people that presidents have met before. There are people that are very, very close to the president that the president will tell you history of how they met. And there are people that have gained appointments that the president does not even know so much about. It happens everywhere all over the world. So it is not about, yes, there are, like I mentioned, Abba Kiari. If you, the history between Abba Kiari and the president, I mean, is so long. Some, these guys have known themselves for about 40 years. And then the present uh, SGF, the, there's the relationship between this guy and the president. And, you know, when you mention a few other persons like that, the president will tell you that, okay, the relationship. And when you read their profile, they had not just been there. They had been one way or the other with the president here and there. But there are some people that had never worked with the president. So it is not like these appointments, they just come. So it is very important that we make this very clear. We know that President Mohamedou Buhari, we, uh, from the word go or from the onset, had not followed absolutely federal character. All right, now, let, let's, is... let's bring Fred back into the conversation. Fred, I want you to react quickly to what he said. The issue of um, the fact that Mr. President does not know all the appointees. Yes, and it that is, it's it a practice. Is, it is natural. Nigeria is a very vast country, a country of almost 200 million people. How do you expect that, Mr. President, you know how, uh, 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 all of them? What is important is that this is government. It is not a one-man show. Mr. President is only the leader. There are others who work with him. There are many offices created by the Constitution, of which Mr. President's office is the lead. And it is expected that Mr. President should have confidence in other people. With that confidence and trust, the other people can now uh, uh, recommend to him People that they know, that they are sure, 
will be able to work. Okay, and that is why in most, in most instances, Mr. President usually goes through the governors or the party hierarchy and all the states to bring in people. All you need to do is to set the standard. If you, if you must know everybody before you appoint the fellow, then how do the corporate organizations recruit their staff? So it, what you, you are saying, know. what you both are saying now, come makes one wonder, shouldn't we now take the blame away from the office of the president and put it on the table of his advisors? Because if you are saying that it's a collaborative effort of members um, that he trusts and other officials, including people he hasn't met before, so... Should, should we be blaming the president for a lopsided appointment? We should blame, we should blame, we should blame Mr. President because the book, the book stops on his table. He is supposed to set the standard and then his lieutenants will follow. He is supposed to say, I want balanced appointment across all the six geopolitical zones. And uh, by the time they give him recommendation of the people, the nominees, he should be able to ask questions about their origin. And if they have met the, the dictates of, of a federal character, then he will put his signature to the appointment. But in a situation where even Mr. President himself is comfortable with appointment from a, only a particular zone or particular part of the country, that does not mean that uh, they, they, we should not blame him. We All right, Fred, uh, let, let, let's... He's the, one, he's the one we elected, and he's the one that should show the way. All right, well, I'm told we're out of time, so I'll just take final thoughts from uh, John in 30 seconds, if you please, just to wrap up this conversation. All right, a very, a very quick one I'd like to mention is that, you see, the All Progressive Congress is uh, a merger of different parties. And from my own thoughts, I, I am of the opinion that sometimes when disappointments are made, the president goes deep into those that used to be members of his political party, the ANPP, just my thought. So to make certain appointments. So talking about we having more of the appointments in Ogun State, just my thought, like I've mentioned, we used to have a whole lot of ANPP members from Ogun State, one way or the other. All so right. let me assume maybe that's the premise of we having more appointments of uh, the president from Ogun State this time. All right, John Wesley, thank you very much for your thoughts and your time on the program. Thank you very much for that. As well, Fred, thank you so much for sharing insights on the matter. Thank you so much. All right, we will take a break now. And when we return, what is next for the recently released Senator Oji Uzokalu? That's up for conversation. Stay with us.